So, if we were living in Southeast Asia, would we move to Australia? Australia, the land of kangaroos, emus, cuddly koalas and beaches. But before you pack your bags and your family and head off to the land down under, it's really important to understand what you're going to get into. So I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pauline. And we have been traveling full time as a family, but we're also born and bred in Australia. But what we want to do today is give everyone a little bit of what to expect if you decide to move to Australia. Now, I think we personally have an interesting perspective here because we do spend a lot of time in Southeast Asia. So we are seeing a lot of Southeast Asia so we do have a reference point to what you would expect if you're coming from one of these countries to a place like Australia. So the first thing you're going to notice as soon as you get off the plane in Australia is how expensive the country actually is. Mm -hmm. One of your biggest expenses is going to be a house. The rent at the moment is astronomical. Like we lived in Western Australia, we were paying $300. When we left, it was over $600 per week. Australian. So rent is different in Australia as well. So here in Asia, a lot of the places might include maybe electricity or internet or furniture. furniture. Australia, no. Rent is just the house. So the main reason why Australia is so expensive, doesn't matter if it comes to housing or food or anything like that, is that the cost of labor is so high. Yes, if you go to Australia, you're gonna earn a minimum of $20 an hour. But if a meal at Subway costs you $20 Australian to, to get a foot long sub and a drink, then it kind of equals out from a cost of living perspective to say living in another country. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that want to move to Australia because they want to earn $30 an hour. But when your expenses gobble up a good chunk of that, it it takes the shine off that a little bit, earning that much money when you have to pay more for yourself and then also pay more tax because you're earning more money. And the thing is, if you move from another country and you're just on a working visa or anything like that, you don't get access to any of the benefits that Australians get by being a resident or being a citizen, which is- Free healthcare if you walk into a hospital. like Free schooling for kids. Schooling. You don't get access to all those benefits which help with that cost of living. Yeah. And the next thing you're gonna notice when you come to Australia to live is that you are going to need a car. Yes, Australia is not walkable. Here, in at the moment, we're in Kuala Lumpur. We can literally walk 500, 600 metres to a major shopping centre and have everything available from a food court to a grocer to the movies, the bowling alley, like everything is contained in this shopping mall. Australia, no. You're not even going to get a bus stop half the time yep. that is close to you. You're going to have to walk a kilometre to a bus stop to then get on a bus. It's probably going to take you 20 to 30 minutes to get somewhere because our suburb are so expansive and the transport just doesn't service them. You'll see that there is a lot of cars in Australia and there's a lot of families that have two cars because again, you can't just go and walk your kids to soccer. You can't just go and walk your kids to football cool. or school a lot of the time. The next thing that will strike you, especially if you come from Southeast Asia, is that everything closes really early in Australia compared to Southeast Asia. Some things don't even open on certain days in Australia. Like here, everything seems to just function. It's either open 24 7. You can get noodles at 2 a.m. down the street, whatever it is. Things are always open. Australia, everyone just goes to bed. Everyone goes to bed. Everything closes about 8 or 9 o'clock and it's bedtime. And you can't even get Grab. Grab is the version of Uber. And it's here within like 30 minutes to maybe an hour. Just depends. Sometimes it's a bit slower. No, you're not going to get those kinds of systems in Australia unless you want to pay through the nose for it. Like 20 or $30 for delivery, whereas here it's like 2 to $3 for delivery. Because I know anytime we make a video about the cost of living and the anytime we make a video about how much cheaper things are here in Malaysia, everyone goes, oh, well, the cost of living is lower and the wages are lower. People don't realize that in Australia, the wages are high because it costs so much to live. It's not like it's high and it's got an average cost of living. It's extremely expensive. And those food delivery places are the same because they're paying those people 20 or $30 an hour to deliver food. They pass that cost on to the consumer. And because of that, you need to earn more and it just becomes this inflationary cycle. So in Australia, it has that as a big issue. The next thing you're going to notice is that if you're used to living in a condo sort of style of living and condo apartment, you're gonna to go to Australia and you're going to pretty much have to get a house in the suburbs. And I know that's a dream for a lot of people and it's pretty nice, like to be fair, it's nice to have a big backyard and stuff, but you don't realize how much work it is to keep a backyard maintained and to keep a big four bedroom house maintained. Like I said, you know, we have been spoiled 
because we have lived in the country and it's easy for us to say, oh yeah, it's really hard to have a big 4 by 2 and look after the, the lawns and things. You know, that may be your dream, but mm. you know, do it for five or six years and you'll start to realize that, hey, when the kids aren't even using the backyard and I'm yep. having to mow 200 square meters of lawn every two weeks to keep the tent landlord off my back, yeah. it can get old really quickly. Yeah. Now let's talk about some of the positives of living in Australia mm. compared to Southeast Asia. One of the big positives of living in Australia, maybe compared to Southeast Asia that we've seen is that there's a lot more public green space in Australia. So most Australian suburbs where you would live, there's generally a park or two or three in every suburb. So if you live in a, in a suburb, there'll generally be a park within walking distance of your house. So every developer that might see suburbs has to build a playground or build an open space and they all compete with each other. And I also think one of the biggest benefits of Australia is that if you like the outdoors, there's no other country on the planet that's better than Australia. You know, we have an abundance of outdoors, whether it's going into the bush and going camping, whether it's going into the forest and nature, or whether it's going to the beach or going in sand dunes and things like that. Australia is a really good country for that. And that is one thing we miss when we travel is like, yes, we have the beaches, but you know, where we used to live in Australia, it was 30 minutes and you were in the outback. It was like 30 minutes and you were at the beaches. It was 30 minutes in any direction and you were into the forests. And I think another pro of living in Australia, if you wanted to move to Australia, is that as far as it goes with kids, I think it's a better environment for children you know, the air is cleaner, yeah. you know, there is less traffic, there's uh, a lot more rules and regulations in regards to keeping people safe. Yeah. You know, we come to countries in Southeast Asia and sometimes they are a little bit too lax with the rules. Now for us, that's fine mm. because we have a lot of common sense, but you know, like little things, like if you go to a school zone, it's legally enforced that people do 40 kilometers an hour around a school zone, yeah. very enforced. And if you do over 30 Ks an hour, you get really big fines. The plus side of people being paid so much is that the police force is paid incredibly well as well. So there's less corruption. So yes, in Southeast Asia, you can probably get a lot more done if you really want to, because you know, if you've got money, you can make the world move for you in a country like Southeast Asia. But in Australia, it doesn't matter how much money you have, the law is the law. And if you're speeding in a Ferrari, the police will still pull you over and still give you a speeding fine regardless of how much money you have in your pocket, which is nice. Exactly. So if we were living in Southeast Asia, would we move to Australia? Well, I think I probably would at the end of the day. There's a lot of opportunities in that country. There's a lot of opportunities. And uh, it's a beautiful place to live. It has a lot of negatives, but it also has a huge amount of pros. Now, does that say I wouldn't live in Southeast Asia in a heartbeat? No, the grass is always green. If we, we've grown up in Australia, we come to Southeast Asia and we think this place is beautiful. Yeah. We think the new people are beautiful. Yeah. And we think it's awesome that everything's open all the time. And, we, and it's nice that we have some buying purchasing power in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're actively trying to work out ways we can leave Australia and move more permanently to Southeast Asia. So it's a grass is always green. If you've yeah. lived here all your life in Southeast Asia, of course you're going to see Australia and think it's a beautiful country. Yeah. The same way we think your countries are beautiful. So let us know in the comments. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree? Is there anything else people need to know that we missed? Leave that in the comments and we'll talk about it in a future video. Hmm. So I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pauline. And we'll catch you all on the horizon. Right.